What is up, YouTubians? Kuda Malloy here coming at you from another exciting location with another exciting video. We are deep in the San Gabriel Mountains doing some semi-car camping, let's say, but basically the river's right there, which is awesome. Good source of water. You just have to filter it. I'll show you that in a second. And then the way I got up here was with my Osprey backpack. This thing has to be from like 1995, 1997, something like that. But I'm using this currently. It's one of those ones that I can just uh, throw some stuff into and get and go. But then what I've got is I've got the S-Beaner clips going on, so I'm attaching my accessory bag to. I've got another little side pouch bag here that I've got some stuff in. And then let's go this way. So how did I get all this stuff in here? I hand trucked it, right? Easy. It's all fire roads to get to the campsite, so pretty simple. But basically a little hand truck will help out with getting the gear in here, especially if you're overpacked like I am. Okay, then I've got my two handy-dandy Nalgene water bottles, right? This is for water after I've filtered it. And then I've got this little table from... 10 Rios. That name changes from time to time. Like I'll see different names, different companies. Then I've got my Sea to Summit, a uh, bigger size bowl over here. It's co collapsible, right? So it folds down to almost nothing. And then yeah. you can stick this in your pack somewhere. And then when you want to use it, just expand it out and boop, and there you go. Okay, then what I've got over here is I got my Timber Ridge XL camping chair, right? The big one. So I can fit my big booty in there <laughs> and basically be comfy all night long at the campfire. This thing will hold up to, I think it's like three, what was it? 400 pounds, 300 pounds, 350 pounds or 400 pounds, something like that. Crazy, strong, built like a tank. Okay, then over here, what I've got going on is I've got my War Bonnet Superfly tarp to basically cut down on the weight. And I have it kind of semi tied up just so that it can basically absorb the brunt of the wind that's coming out here i may end up taking it down if the wind gets too strong but use some paracord there as you can see it's a 1.8 millimeter paracord here's it's being used in action and then boom there's the money shot right there that is my war bonnet blackbird xlc hammock with a one tigress winter underquilt going on basically all set up as you can see we'll, we'll take you more of that setup right now so let's go over here let's do the hammock setup so basically what's going on is i got uh, this is how I hung the undercoat. I had to do some modifications to the one tigress, right? This is the one tigress undercoat right here. I had to do some modifications, added some nice marine grade bungee cord. Then I clipped the clip that comes with the one tigress into uh, this little clip right here. So I trying to get focus kind of tough. Let's see. Okay, there we go. So basically I clipped this clip into the clip that comes on the war bonnet so it's an easy attachment point and then basically i got one set of bungee going down this way for this side and then i got one set of bungee going down this way for this side basically so you can see that that i'm basically trying to make it so that the under quilt can basically wrap around the hammock which is kind of the way it's supposed to be and then i have just a little bit of an air gap down here to get to trap that pocket of air so that i can stay warm and toasty at nighttime what's cool about this war bonnet blackbird xlc Check this out. You got a little shelf right here, right? You can put some items in there if you want to put like a flashlight in there or whatever. But it's basically like just a little tiny shelf, right? That goes underneath. So you can see it's like a little shelf. And then this comes with these uh, shock cord kind of straps that I then tied to a tree. Or I could go down to somewhere around here. There should be a stake. There we go. I could go to a stake if I had to down there. So I kind of have it set up just in advance for any situation, whether it's windy or weather. Like it's just normal weather, there's not a whole lot of wind. And then what I did was all around my individual campsite, I hung up this paracord, this reflective paracord, just to keep people from walking into this cord right here. But the War Bonnet Blackbird, oh my God, this com this combination that I found was pretty awesome. And I'm getting warm nights. It's about 40 degrees, like 35 degrees at nighttime. And then the morning, I think it goes all the way down to like just above freezing, like 32 32, 33 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. And the way I hung this up was to protect the, this is the whoopee sling. That goes into the tree straps that Warbonnet kind of sends with the hammock. But to protect these, so let me see if I can grab focus here real quick. There we go, almost. There we go. Now's a good time to hit that subscribe button down there below if you haven't already subscribed. But basically what's happening is, is 
my the tree straps that came with the war bonnet blackbird xlc i'm trying to protect those as long as possible and i don't want to go around this gnarly tree over here so what i did was i did this buckle system using two carabiners as you can see there's a video i did kind of a few videos back before this one if you want to go back in my video history that's another reason to subscribe to the channel and basically that goes on to some tubular webbing which then went around my tree so the webbing is what can absorb all the scratches the abrasions as you can see right there i can shred this stuff and toss this out and keep my original war bonnet straps kind of newish looking better you know hoping to extend their life as much as possible okay then what i did was i took another piece of paracord and basically went around the tree right using the trucker's hitch so you can see right there trucker's hitch that goes back into whatever hitch this thing is called or loop or not or whatever and then this is my accessory line so what i can do is i can hang up all my little accessories on this one line right here including my solomon shoes i'll have to show you those in a second and then basically i've got a little accessory bag this is actually a top bag that went to my old osprey backpack but whatever you want to put here is fine another bag another satchel whatever and i'm using carabiners and s beaners to basically hold up these items and then here i've got my water filter kit so i've got this is a hydro flow hydro blue sorry hydro blue versa flow and basically the way it works is I have Canock bags or Sinoc bags. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but the orange bag connects to this side. The blue bag connects to this side. Then you pour your, your water from your river, right? <laughs> like the San Diego River or your water source, whatever that is, into the orange bag, seal it up, and then basically hang it. And it does like a slow drip kind of a system where it'll filter itself out. And this is an example of what the Canock bag looks like. Let me grab that real quick. So this is the end of the Canock bag. I'm trying to pull this out without pulling everything else out, which is always a challenge. Uh, let's see here. Okay, there we go. So basically what's going to happen is, is I'm going to hang this, right? I'm going to hang this from one of the trees. I got my Canuck bag. There we go. And then basically using paracord, using the s beaners or whatever, I will hang this. Put my water in here. That's going to go down to that spout. That connects to the filter. And then the blue bag goes underneath. I'll have to show you that in a separate video. But then what else I've got is I've got the firebox, right? I'm kind of hanging that up. These things are heavy. The fireboxes are heavy, but I think they are worth their weight in gold because you can use a whole bunch of different kind of fuel systems in there. You can have, struggling with this, okay. I'll just put this down on my table for now. Okay, so what you can do is on the firebox, you can do wood sticks. If you're in an area where you can burn wood, collect dead wood off the floor, that kind of a thing. Or you can do like a Nesbit cube. You could also do a Trangion here. You could do uh, a propane type setup or a butane type, type setup with some adapters to basically use this as a windscreen, but also get uh, your stuff cooked however you want to. So let me come back over on this side. There's another shot of the beautiful river. I mean, look at how gorgeous that is. Look at how beautiful that is. Just that lovely, lovely, lovely river going right, pretty much right through the campsite. I'm about, I'd say I'm about 75 to 100 feet away from the water right here. We're like right on the edge of a little shelf. Look at how cool it is. Anyways, now is another good time to hit that subscribe button down there below. All right, then what I've got is, let me show you the shoes. So this is the Solomon. These are the, what is this, X Ultras. And the reason why I chose these shoes was because I can cross through the river and through the water, like if I have to boulder hop or get from one side to the other, and these can get wet all day long. And then basically the venting in here, this little mesh material, will allow the water to come back out again. So how cool is that? That way if they do get wet, I can always drain out the shoes and then they should be dry right when I, either when I'm continuing walking down the trail when I get to camp or at camp, I can just hang them up just like I did right here and give them a good like airing out, so to speak. But they're awesome. For, for the money that you spend, it's good to get some good quality gear once in a while. So I totally love having these. But just a quick way to show everybody how to dry these out when they do get wet. And as you can see, mine are nice and dry. Okay, here's another shot of the War Bonnet Blackbird XLC from the side view. And as you can see right here, I've got my One Tigris Winter Underquilt. And then there's basically the hammock itself. If you are a larger individual, you're overweight, you're looking for something that'll support you, this hammock will hold up to 400 pounds. So that's so awesome. I, I struggled and struggled and struggled with trying to find a hammock that could hold the weight but also be strong, durable, well-built. You get the idea. What I've got on here is the winter uh, covering. So normally this would come with a mesh like mosquito net. What I did was because I knew we were going to be out here in these extreme temperatures, 
like 40, it's about 40 at night, going down to like 33 in the morning, 32 in the morning. I wanted to make sure I could keep as much heat in there as possible. And what they did, what Orbana did was they were smart. They put a little bit of mosquito, mosquito netting back here to basically allow this to vent out and to breathe because you don't want to suffocate in there, right? You don't want to be completely trapped in. But it's good that they did that. And then what you also got is on this side, you have another little shelf that you can always attach stuff to, right? So here I've got more shock cord, which actually comes with the kit. I think you, I think uh, you may have to purchase the extra shock cord. I can't remember if it's like $3. It's pretty cheap. But basically this is adjustable. And then I've got a bowling knot over here so it'll slide around. So as the wind blows or whatever, and I'll, I'll have to tighten this up later. But you get the idea. But you got another little shelf here, and then you got more mosquito netting. This is the head side of the whole system and then if i open this up right you can see sorry yeah <laughs> and then uh as you can see i attached some 1.8 millimeter paracord right so that i can pull this closed at night with my foot like i showed you in another video and then what i got going on here is on the inside i've got just to keep the shape i've got my little neck pillow <laughs> right i've got like you i'm sure you've seen these at the airport you got one of those going on, right? That's for my head. Okay, we're and we're back. And then basically over here, I've got my down jacket that costs less than a hundred bucks. Comes in size up to 4XL, which is pretty awesome. Then I've got my top quilt here, which is more like a sleeping bag, but this is keeping me warm and toasty. And you can see what's going on all inside there. So then you got more, that's the mosquito netting from the top right there. There's my ridge line. You can hang stuff too, and then there's my shelf, right, with my flashlight in there and a few things. So we got that going on, and then there's their tag, and that's how that's how you know you're on the head side, right? What's also cool is if you're like I'm a, my head is to the, is that left side of the hammock? If you wanted to flip this and put your head on this side of the hammock, because you're going to do a diagonal lay, all you have to do is flip this inside out, take off this covering whether you have the mosquito net cover or whether you have this like winter top coat solid cover or whatever it is and then basically unzip and then rezip and then now basically your head would be on that side and your feet would be on this side but the way it is now let's come back on this side <laughs> i've got this nice little foot box right here so the foot box side is here if you look at the hammock and as a whole the foot box side is here the solid material shelf is over here and then my head would go over there. So I'm laying diagonally. So as the hammock lays this way, right as the hammock lays straight, my head's on this side, my feet are on this side, getting that perfect diagonal flat lay, which is what everybody kind of wants to me to be more at ease when you're sleeping <laughs> and you're not sleeping like a banana, right? So there you go. Anyways, hope you enjoyed watching this video of the just the camp setup. I will be getting into more specific videos on some of those items that we saw, which brings me to a good point. Down in the description there, down below, there's a link to a lot of the products that I just showed you. They're geared towards everybody, but if you're maybe a larger individual and you're looking for something like the Timber Ridge XL camp chair, the bigger oversized camp chair, there'll be a link to that in there, which is great. It's a good heavy duty chair. I'll also put links to the Nalgene bottles. I'll put links to the Sea to Summit bowl and cup system. Uh, you can either buy a single piece or you can buy them as a set. I usually try to buy the set and then kind of use whatever I need. I'll put links to the One Tigress, to the War Bonnet. We'll get that in there for sure. But basically, that's basically it. And then just make sure to hit that subscribe button down there below. Also hit the notification bell if you like what you're seeing. And then lastly, there is a link to my Facebook page. It's Cooter Malloy Product Reviews on Facebook. So make sure you visit that Facebook page, like, follow, and subscribe on there. I do have to start taking this down now because the wind's getting kind of crazy. Uh, but snake skins will be the next thing. <laughs> snake skins will be the next thing that I buy. Amber waves of grain, right? Just trying to keep the noise down. Okay, so snake skins will be the next thing that I buy. And basically, they're like a sock or sleeve that goes around your whole tarp to basically keep it from flapping in the wind like this. I didn't have any to bring with me on this trip, but maybe on this trip. Anyways, I'm Cooter Malloy, and I will catch you all on the next exciting adventure.